check, check. Okay, good morning everyone. Let's start. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to continue to learn. Please forgive us from our sins. Be merciful to us. Please continue to send Holy Spirit and give, guide us and give us wisdom and understanding to improve our talents for your glory, especially my students. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, okay. I was discussing about uh, fundamental beliefs. You know why? Because Ellen White said teachers should tell about fundamental beliefs. Do you know where that is from? I will show you. It says here, my friends. You see, it says here, it should be the work of every teacher to make permanent the truths that have called us out as a peculiar people to stand as a peculiar people before the world. Counselors to teachers, page 250.2. So it is my work to tell you about <laughs> fundamental beliefs. We are number eight. And it is also in the syllabus. I told you where it is in the syllabus. <laughs> because somebody asked me, sir, where is, where is that in the syllabus? And then we found it. Just for the sake of showing it to you, I will show it to you. The first word in the syllabus is Adventist. So Adventist means 28 things. Anyway, we finish number eight. Number nine, life, death, and resurrection. Meaning, Jesus lived on earth. Do you believe Jesus lived on earth? Of course, just look at your calendar. It says, March 20, 2024. 20, 2,024 years ago, Jesus was on earth, right? So even the calendar professed that Jesus was around. So, Jesus died for our sins as a substitute, substitutionary and expiatory, reconciling and transforming. Because Jesus died, we don't want to, we are, up, we are, we hate, we want to be good. We want to react properly. The resurrection, and Jesus not only died, he resurrected. Wow! Resurrection proclaims God's triumph over the forces. So even if we die, no problem. Why? Because Jesus can resurrect us. Diba, diba? You you're gonna die doing bad. If you do bad, you die. If you do good, you die. So, but if you do bad, you die, and then you die again. If you do good, you die, and then you don't die again. You die once only. Temporary death. But God will save you. So it's better to <coughs> follow Jesus. And, and those who accept the atonement assures their final victory over sin and death. Okay. Every knee will bow before Jesus Christ, the resurrection of Jesus. The devil cannot resurrect his angels, and the devil cannot resurrect himself. Experience of salvation. We have, uh, the Bible says, He who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I think that's in Mark 10. Let me see. Okay, Google help us remember, but the Holy Spirit remind us what to remember. 
Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't have to know everything. Just call on Jesus' name and you will be saved. Okay. How do you know you are continuously saving? Okay. We have justification. You are saved by grace through faith. It is free. But there is a verse called uh, saved. Being saved will be saved. I don't know if it will come out of Google. Something like that. And then there is the... Okay, this is the most important thing. To be saved. Why we need to be saved? Because sin... The, 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 uh, the price for sin is death. And because of sin, we will die. But God has a solution. He exchanged His life with our life so that we have chance to repent. And when we believe Jesus, we, we can be saved. The Bible says, believe. You know what believe means? Uh, if I tell you, you study, and then you did not study, did you believe me? But if you say, obey what I said, then you believe me, right? So how do you measure belief? <laughs> Just measure if you are following <laughs> the instruction. So when we, when, when we say believe in God, that means there are things that God said, and if you do it, then you believe. Abiding in Jesus Christ is the assurance of salvation. Okay. Because we are like AI. We are continuing to think. In AI, believing is alignment. It's called alignment. Alignment, yeah? We have to be aligned with God. Number 11, growing in Christ. We are not afraid of evil spirits anymore because God is more powerful. Furthermore, we continue to grow in Christ, meaning we, try, we continue to know about His character his law, whatever he is saying through the prophets, and going to church. Why, why, why do we like to go to church? So that we can listen to God's word. Because God's word changes us. Man. Before, I used to like to steal. Now, I don't like to steal. Oh, diba? I told you testimony. Before, I stole all the software I can steal. Now, but since I was second year college, the Holy Spirit convicted me not to steal anymore. So I stopped stealing. You know what happened to my business? My business was typing job. So the, the operating system I was using is stolen. And the word processor I was using is stolen. When I stopped using pirated software, I used a free operating system and a free uh, text editor. You know what happened to my typing job? Still the same. <laughs> People like to type, like me to type their, their things, their projects, even if I'm not using, even if my typing is uglier, because the free software I was using could not justify. It. So, if you are faithful, God will is more faithful. And. The church this is including everybody who profess to uh, who believe in Jesus Christ. And, but in the Bible, there are there is the church that is true, it, that teaches what is according to the Bible. Of course, the enemy wants to fake everything, and he wants to make a fake church also. And the fake church, there are many. The Bible says they. There is a mother and there are daughters. Those are the churches that don't obey, especially the Sabbath. 
But we are not just the three church, just not to do some, just to sleep and do nothing. We have a mission. And you know that the Jews were the true church before, but they forgot to do voice of youth. <laughs> they did not go uh, evangelism. They were praying, fasting, and uh, studying the Bible, but they were not telling the whole world about the salvation. So us now, when Jesus came, he was telling everybody about salvation, and then they were jealous that Jesus has more abuse in YouTube. <laughs> so they persecute him because of jealousy. Anyway, we are not supposed to be like the Jews not doing anything. We should have a mission. Because Jesus said, go ye therefore and teach. That's why I encourage everyone to teach. I will record you. I have many cameras. I can lend you a camera. I think I should bring the camera here and uh, teach you how to use it. Okay, next meeting I will bring. <laughs> because, you know what? Nobody understands the camera more than us. <laughs> because the camera is, the com is a computer inside. Okay. So, <clears throat> so that when you go home, if you're, co if you're, Software doesn't work. At least you know how to use the camera. <laughs> right? But I hope both of them will work. <clears throat> this proclamation is symbolized by the three angels' message. Okay. We have a mission. The most important thing is the mission. Because it is boring without a mission. Unity in the body of Christ. Yeah, and we have different kinds of people. Some are rich, some are poor, some are brown, some are white, some are yellow, and some are green. <laughs> and nationality difference, high and low, rich and poor, male and female. But we are all united because we are all saved by God. Wow, amazing. We are brothers and sisters. We are all equal in Christ, and because of the Holy Spirit has bonded us into one fellowship in Him. It doesn't matter who owns it. The equipment when we are doing evangelism is very amazing. Through Revelation, okay, we are one because, because we are helping, we, we, our boss is one, okay. The unity in Christ. We are the, who is the tree? Who is the root? We are the branches. Who is the vine? Jesus. The Bible says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. You cannot bear fruit without me. So we cannot bear fruit without Jesus. Baptism, we talked about that already. Uh, Jesus said, Jesus was baptized not because he has sinned. So it's okay to be baptized even if you don't think you have sinned. But of course we all have sinned. Baptism symbolizes the forgiveness of sins. And very nice. All our foolishness will be forgiven by God in baptism <clears throat> and it's symbolized by baptism how many seconds when you repent and then you are forgiven do you know how if you ask for car how many years depending on how much you work right if you ask for wife the one, that one you need to be humble <laughs> more complicated than than uh, Buying car. The car doesn't uh, uh, quarrel you. It obeys everything. <laughs> if you pray, but, but if you pray for repentance, you know how many hours before God will forgive you? It is the fastest prayer to be answered. Not uh, asking for girlfriend or wife or car or uh, passing grade. 
that one you can delay. But God doesn't delay the prayer of repentance. It is the fastest. So if you sin a while ago and you repent now, now you are clear. You understand, class? Ellen White says the prayer of repentance is the highest priority of, uh, you know, in the computer here. If you type task manager, you will see here there's a priority. Some process have higher priority than others here. Uh, Sunday. Here, see, there is a priority. If you change the priority, you can right click and then check uh, set priority here. The prayer for repentance has the highest priority. Do you see, you see this computer? You look class. I'm showing you the priority. Can you change the priority of one process? Can you make one process more priority in the operating system? Yes. In task manager, you can right click set priority. The low priority, all of the things that are higher will run first before the one that is lower. So the highest priority prayer is repentance, according to Ellen White. Lord's Supper, the Bible says, Jesus said, do this often. So Jesus washed his disciples' feet as a symbol of humility. Repentance and confession also we have to do. And willingness to serve one another and unite our hearts in love. Okay. Spiritual gifts and ministries. According to the scriptures, there is ministry as faith, healing, prophecy, proclamation, teaching, administration, class. Do you want uh, which one you want? This is free. Choose, just choose as much as you want. God will give you, you know? You can choose here. You can choose and you can choose all also. <laughs> because the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. But sometimes even if you don't choose, God give you already. I think you are all have the gift of computer. Because even if your program is not running, at least you are interested. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, everybody has bugs. All programmers have bugs, <laughs> right? All programmers uh, try 10 times, 30 times to make it work. And sometimes it takes a long time to fix. But because of your interest, God has given you spiritual gift for computer. And computer is very amazing to do God's work. See? It will help you uh, when we make a website and we upload something, the whole world can see it. Wow, Eva. <clears throat> to help and service and charity and encouragement of people. Some members are uh, called pastoral, evangelistic, apostolic, teaching ministry. Okay. Do you know how to how to talk? You just read, <laughs> you speak, and people listen. And I want to encourage everybody to preach. But preaching is a gift. But they can ask gift. That's why there is a school of the prophets before, so that not only Samuel and uh, can be prophets. Okay. I want to show you number 18, gift of prophecy. Joel 2.28 says, In the last days, their men, sons and daughters shall prophesy. That's why I'm encouraging you to uh, preach in your dialect, either Tagalog, English, or... Uh, oh, none, none is also has dialect. What do you call your dialect? Your... Remind, which country are you from again? Myanmar? Your dialect is called? Myanmar also? Okay. I think I saw there in the website. But you are very shy. You are, you are as, I think you are as shy as Ellen White. <laughs> You know, Ellen White was so shy because she, she, I know, her face is, 
somebody stone threw stone on her face right when she was small and she was in coma for many many for a long time and then she woke up but god can use anybody <clears throat> In 1 Corinthians 14, class, oh, it's almost time. I have three minutes. You see here, I will show you something, class. Follow after love. Okay, love is okay. Spiritual gifts are okay, but rather that ye may prophesy. See, everybody is a prophet. My class, I have a class of prophets. See, the Bible says it's better to prophesy. And the other verse here, class, is here in the last verse. See, verse 39. Covet to prophesy. You see, wherefore, brethren, Covet to prophesy and forgive forbid not. So if you see if you see the preacher is good in preaching and you like to preach also, the Bible says you it's okay. You want to preach. It's better, it's nice to study to preach. And you see here, class, <clears throat> that's why I'm asking you what dialects you are speaking. It says here, forbid not to speak with tongues. The tongue that you will be listening when I when you were still small. That's the tongue you can preach in. Diba? And I'm trying to encourage you just in case you want to give us the honor of recording. Wow. You think about it, yeah? Even if I don't understand what you are saying, I will record you. I will understand the references. If you are saying the verses, num the numbers. <clears throat> okay. But Ellen White is given more gift of prophecy because she wrote so many 250,000 uh, para uh, 250,000 paragraphs the, the one you downloaded that i copy and pasted from uh, the dvd the cd it's even longer than the bible the bible is 33,103 anyway the law of god yeah the law of god is the 10 commandments <clears throat> Number one. Okay, let's recite. Where is number one? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven, that is in earth beneath, it, that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, I God, am a jealous God, this in the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation. Of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Number three, thou shalt not take the name, the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take at his name in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God in it. Thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor the manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within. The gate for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Number five. Honor thy father and thy mother that the days may belong upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Number six. Thou shalt not kill. Number seven. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Number eight. Thou shalt not steal. Number nine. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Number ten. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. That is the Ten Commandments. Here in number 15, or number uh, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not steal pirated software. Oh, you see, my friends, here, do not steal uh, no, Photoshop. See, it is here. The Bible says, there is a, another verse. I hate robbery for sacrifice. 
It says here, I the Lord love justice, I hate robbery. Uh, Isaiah 61. Where is it? I hate robbery for burnt offering. Oh, you still Photoshop for ministry. <laughs> so what else? What will we do? You just look for another alternative. There are many free. Okay. I was going to tell you about the Sabbath, but it is already time. The Sabbath is the great test of obedience. Who are we going to follow? God or ourselves? Or Satan? So the Sabbath is a test. God said, do not. In Exodus 16, God said to the Israelites, do not cook. And Exodus 20, do not do any work. So, until now, we supposed to cook our food before Friday, according to the Bible, and according to Ellen White, and according to, you know. So this is what the Bible says, Exodus 16, you cook your food on Friday. Ellen White says, those who cook on the Sabbath violate the fourth commandment. Official statements on Adventist.org say the buying and preparation of food should be done before Sunday, sundown Friday. Also in Adventist Biblical Research, also in document ad or archives. In Adventist mission, somebody doesn't want to be Adventist because he doesn't want to eat uh, stale food on the Sabbath. But he changed his mind. Tagalog document says, dapat tingnan ng ina ang pagkain ay handa na before the sun sets on Friday in the Tagalog document from North Philippine Union mission or conference in 18, 1968. So, officially, class, we are not supposed to cook on Sabbath. If you read the documents, but you look at the people, something else. <laughs> the solution is uh, read. Because the more we read, the more it, we will know how to, how to solve that one. So, actually, I thought it was okay to cook. And then I tried to look for reference. I could not find. All I found is all the same with the Bible. So I have to change. I have to change, even if my friends don't like me anymore. <laughs> because anyway, my friends cannot resurrect me, but God's word can resurrect me. So I will want to be more, more loyal to God's word than to my friends. Anyway, I found out there are many other people who are doing it. This one, I found many people who are trying not to cook on the Sabbath, and I listed all of them here. There, there are many more, but they are, have the same idea. If their idea is the same, I don't add. So I, I was telling the truth in the Bible, and then people were coming to me, you know what, this is what we do, you know what, there are many people who are trying to follow. And I think one of the reasons the people don't know is because they don't have nice example. If you have example, you just copy what they do, right? No problem. You are not stressed. So how to preserve your food without spoiling? There are many examples here. And I copy, I, paste, I pasted their story and uh, so that it will be easier for people to obey. Okay. This is the new thing which I think nobody else has done. Okay. Many people are preaching, don't do it, but they are not telling how. Me, I... Uh, God showed me many things people are telling me so I just listed how about camping you just type in Lazada uh, no, cook food you will find many food that is vegetarian that is already cooked packed already you, it is this last three months I want to put all the cafeteria food on, on Friday in like this <laughs> And you put in your backpack, you don't have to go there. <laughs> you can eat anywhere. 
Okay, it's already time. Uh, I will continue my preaching later. Okay, Sabbath stewardship. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for opportunity to tell the truth freely in this country and this time. Please help us to be faithful. Uh, thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay.